Hello and welcome to Versus, presented to you by the Rant Channel. I am Josh. I'm here to pit two games against each other. Today we have a matchup that uh, it's just it's just too perfect to pass up because both games count on the same day. Both games were complete opposites of one another, and I am talking about Assassin's Creed Unity versus Assassin's Creed Rogue. And I know I've been doing a lot of Assassin's Creed in the past few weeks. I did Assassin's Creed Black Flag like a few weeks ago. I did, um, I did, uh, what's it called? Assassin's Creed uh, Syndicate. <laughs> Even more long ago. But this is probably going to be the end of the Assassin's Creed series because this is the one that really pisses me off the most out of every single Assassin's Creed matchup you could have. This one's going to piss me off the most. I'm going to try and keep my thoughts concise and detailed and ready to go because one of these games is really 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 underrated and one of the games is like you know it was so bad at release that it just left an impression on me that no other game will ever leave on me uh... It, probably ever hopefully not ever <laughs> anywho let's get started with category number one category number one is graphics and i hate this category and i wish it would die but i have to put it in here so, uh, Assassin's Creed Unity has good graphics, I, I guess. I, I think the thing that is most important to look at when you're looking at graphics is, you know, does the, like, in a, especially in games like this, does the blood match up to where you hit the person? Does the blood match up on the stab points? Does, does hitting someone make something ricochet off their body, like sweat or, or even blood or something like that? Um, you know, when people fall down, do they fall down correctly? Do they... And Assassin's Creed Unity didn't really have any of that uh, realistic quality to it because the game was really, really, really glitchy. And most of the time when you kill someone, I mean, you could either morph through a wall uh, that you would kill them and they just kind of like spaz out on death. Blood stains and stuff like that didn't really match up to where you hit them, especially after the uh, you kill them like a big guy, like a general, and you uh, hear his last confession. And... You just see blood like all across his face, but you hit him in the back. <clears throat> Not very consistent. That being said, Assassin's Creed Rogue isn't much better. <laughs> um, the graphics are, of course, worse than the Unity because it's for the the, uh, the last generation, the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 generation. Um, and, I mean, you could argue that the physics in the game are better, but I don't think so that they're that much greater. That being said... Assassin's Creed Rogue does something that you does something that Unity didn't, and something that Black Flag had was this really great water dynamic. The water in the game felt realistic; it was wavy. The icebergs in this game are, are cool; they're they're great. They they really affect the play style of the game, and they look good. And everything looks pretty well put together in this game. It kind of looks more like Assassin's Creed Three than Black Flag, of course. But still, the water and the stuff like that really shines in this game. And that's why I gave Assassin's Creed Rogue a point in the graphics. Because I say it all the time. Graphics aren't everything. And when your game is spazzing out and giving me this shit, and the, sure, the graphics look okay. But really, when it comes down to it, it's all about the way the game is presenting itself. And Assassin's Creed Unity doesn't present itself very well at all. <clears throat> Moving on to category number two. Category number two is gameplay. How does the gameplay work? Does it work? <laughs> well, in Assassin's Creed Unity, you could really, really, really argue that it does not work at all. Um, especially upon release. And that is when I played this game. I did not I did not keep it long enough to have patches and stuff like that. So anyone out there who's going, Oh, but the gameplay got so much better after the patches. It doesn't fucking matter. A game should work the day it comes out, not three months later. Get your shit together. This is why we get shitty games. Anyways, um, Assassin's Creed Unity had things like people just kind of floating away. Um, people, it, like, uh, just random AI around, kind of just... They just start lifting off the ground, or they they they, uh, they either ragdoll and just fall down dead, or they'll stand there stiff like they just got loaded into the game They in that, in that T position. You also have people who are running away, and they just kind of phase through walls. Um, there are various areas in the game where you try to backstab someone or, or stab them from under or over cover, I should say. And you just keep falling through the map. 
and uh, you know it's you die eventually, and you have to redo the whole fucking mission. Um, also, I mean the climbing in the game. If you're gonna look at the climbing, it, it it just wasn't very refined. Like I like the idea that they have of press O to go down, press X to go up, but it just doesn't work. You go up. And then, for some reason, he latches onto a fake building and he climbs until you're up above the map, and then you run around at some points. Some points. I say some points. Climbing up is not the is not the big deal about this. But the climbing up's perfect in this game. It's when you put in the climb down, fast run down, or or try to go around the side of a building. You just latch onto the side of the building and you start running up the building. And you're like, no, I want to just go around the building. Or no, I don't want to drop ten feet to my death. I want to drop to the small pole that's sticking up right there, and I've jumped on it before, and it doesn't let me do it. Assassin's Creed Rogue, I really don't complain about the free running in this game, because it's the same as Assassin's Creed Black Flag. So there's nothing different about it. It's still got the same old kinks, um, and I think uh, out of all the Assassin's Creed games I've played, you know, by far Rogue isn't the best free running. I mean, I think the best free running was either Revelations or, or um, Brotherhood. But the, it's still better than uh, Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed Unity, and Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And those are the three, the big three bad eggs that I can come up with for this series. So that's why Assassin's Creed Rogue gets another point in the, the gameplay category. <clears throat> category number three. Oops, I put the wrong number. Category number three is Open World. How, how does it feel to be in an open world in these games? And if you look at Assassin's Creed Unity's map, yes, they made it small because they wanted to kind of go back to the days of Assassin's Creed 2. But when you spoil us with Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and how massive those maps were, you just... It just doesn't feel right. It feels small, very small. And at least in Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood, which are the two smallest maps, at least there was dynamic in the areas that you went to. In Assassin's Creed Unity, it's all just buildings and maybe a few fields here or there. It's not... It's just... It's not dyna dynamic at all. When I look at a game, like, let's... You know, even though I didn't enjoy Arkham Knight, you can still appreciate the dynamic of how each island was a little bit different, and there was a bunch of things to, you know, the to, to climb on and, and do with. And, yes, it's building after building, but not each building was the same, like, copy-paste from the last one. <clears throat> and that's just how I felt about the map in the open world in Assassin's Creed Unity. Yes, there was, there was a bunch of side missions to do, and I think the best thing to come out of Assassin's Creed Unity was the detective stuff you had to do. You had to keep, piece together detective work, and it was great. And in Syndicate, if they had put that in the main game, it would have been it would have been better. But instead, they release it as day one DLC, which is giant load of shit. So even though something really good came out of this game, the gameplay and the open world just does not match up. And if you look at Assassin's Creed Rogue, which has the ship stuff, it has everything you love from a Black Flag. It has all the ship stuff. It has reverse boarding, where the enemy can actually board your ship. You have this new dynamic with ice. You have to boost through ice. Yeah, you, you can ram icebergs, and it will make a shockwave that'll sink smaller ships. I mean, you got the 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 diverse landscapes of north north northeast America, where you're going into Canada and stuff like that. And it's just all it's wintry. There's lots of woods. There's a few towns you visit. That is my by definition a good open world. I I really you know, I didn't like Assassin's Creed 3 as much as all the other ones. But the open world in that game was very very good. It was very dynamic and this one follows the same suit. Yes, Black Flag had a pretty dynamic, you know, area to it, but it was mostly water. This one is not mostly water. It has a lot of water, but there is way more land and that is why the open world category Rogue wins. Category number uh, 4 is story. And <sighs> story in Assassin's Creed Unity it just doesn't make much sense and Black Flag I I may give Black Flag as much praise as the next guy but the story in Black Flag was so sloppy that it, it just it made the game a little bit less fun for me 
And so when you look at a sense Creed Unity, you go, okay, they're focusing on the small stuff, the story and stuff like that. Well, I mean, you start off and your your father's murdered and then you grow up as like a butler and you break out of the butler business and you... It, okay, I, I this is really funny to me because the whole story hinges on him not delivering a fucking letter to someone. So you start off helping the Templars like most games and... You eventually notice, oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. So you go to the assassins, and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll help you. And uh, you get trained by the drunken man, you know, uh, drunk man number two. <laughs> and you eventually have to fight him, of course, and he's a little bit of a boss battle. But the, I don't even call it a boss battle. I just call it a piece of shit fat battle. And then you get to, you know, you, you have this girlfriend who's a Templar in the game, and for some reason she keeps going against you and then going back to you, then going against you and going back to you. And then for some reason you quit the the uh, the, the assassins in France, go, you suck. You get out of here, and you're banned from the assassins, and you still go and do the thing where you go kill the Templars. And, you know, you take your girlfriend with you, of course, and you go for the final battle. And the final battle is such bullshit. They didn't, like... It's hard, but it's hard. It's not like uh, you know. It's hard, hard like Bloodborne. It's hard because it, it, they they throw this bullshit at you. He has an electric tech that knocks you down for at least five seconds. I've counted. I did the battle enough times. It knocks you down for five seconds. He can attack again with that same move in three, so it knocks you back down again. And the shockwave happens after you hit him. <laughs> so it's they just. It's stupid! This isn't a boss fight! This is just you throwing some random gay-ass bullshit at me at the end of a game. But anyways... So you beat him and he kills your girlfriend and then, you know, everything's happy again. And... <clears throat> if... I, I I don't remember if he kills her or not. You know, I... I played that game so long ago and I tried to forget about it. But there was nothing refreshing about the story. There was nothing different. It followed the pattern that you knew it was going to follow. And really, uh, you can't you can't praise it for a story that it doesn't have. And Assassin's Creed Rogue, on the other hand, has a good story. It's refreshing. It's new. You start out as an assassin. Um, he's kind of a trainee. It kind of has the the Star Wars Force Awakens plot to it. You start out as a trainee, and then something happens. <clears throat> and you realize how terrible the Assassin's Creed Order is, and you, uh, you defect from them, you go to the Templars, they accept you, and then you go around killing assassins for the rest of the game. And it's different, because you're on the other side of the sword now. And the fighting style of the main guy and the weapons he has are just, they're different than any other game that they've put out previously. And the weapons on the ship are so much better than in Black Flag. I mean, you got the fireballs, you got tons of different things that are just awesome. And <clears throat> the story combined with that, just, it, it rules. <laughs> okay. Because this, because Assassin's Creed Rogue was so underrated, no one really played it. And I really am, that's just unfortunate. And if Assassin's Creed Rogue had been released without Assassin's Creed Unity, and it would just been the next generation thing, it would have been 100% better. It, it's good now, but it would have been so much better with it being their main focus. But anyways, that's why Assassin's Creed Rogue gets the point for story. Next up in category number 6, we have multiplayer. I'm sorry, 5. Category 5. Multiplayer. <clears throat> I'll start out by saying this. Assassin's Creed Rogue doesn't have multiplayer. Um, and I thought this was a good step for them. Because multiplayer in Assassin's Creed games never worked, it was never fun. So I'm glad they took out the multiplayer aspect. Um, if we switch over to Assassin's Creed Unity, the multiplayer was promising. It was four-player co-op. You know, what could go wrong? Well, you know, you combine the multiplayer with the terrible game mechanics, and then you, you also divide that by the amount of people who just want to do things by themselves, and then you divide that by the people who just want to fuck you over, then you combine that by the people who don't know how to play, then you combine that by the people, and it just goes on and on and on, and the multiplayer just really fell flat on the face, it never really worked, the missions were boring, nothing really happened, it didn't even affect anything. 
And it was so hard to get your friends to join you. You had to join the same guild. You had to make a guild on your friends list. They had to join your guild after going halfway through the fucking game. Then you had to invite them. And everyone had to be online to play with them. It was just... It was a pile of shit. And I would rather have no multiplayer than multiplayer like this. So that's why Rogue gets in their point. And finally with uh, category number six, we have the quote-unquote new stuff. <laughs> you might be saying new stuff. That's pretty vague. Yes, new stuff. Like new weapons, new crews, new something or another. I don't know. In Assassin's Creed Unity, they did a good job with the... Uh, with a variation of weapons. You had your light weapons, you had your heavy weapons, and you had your long weapons. And you could use whatever you wanted. And that was good. You know, I, I, I enjoyed playing with the different types of weapons. They all had different feels, different play styles. Um, and, you know, that's, you know, that's one good thing about it. You know, I like the weapons. But the one thing that really just kind of fell on its face was these missions. The, the, um, um, what are they called? The Rift Missions. Yes, they were different, and I liked playing the World War II one, but come on. They just kept sprouting up after and after and after, and it really didn't affect anything that you were doing. And really, they were just distractions from the main game after you beat them once. <laughs> and actually, I uh, going through the game, funny thing is... <laughs> There's a side mission that appears at the same location as a rift mission. And once that rift mission spawns, you can't play the side mission anymore. I was like, what the fuck? I can't go to this guy's mission. It keeps telling me to go to the rift mission. I don't want to go to the rift mission. I want to do the side mission. So that was, you know, that was just distracting. And then, uh, what else was new? Um, another cool thing they added to Unity was the reverse... Um, when you, you do the little cut the rope thing and you glide up the rope, there's a counterweight and it falls on the guy's head and kills him. I thought that was kind of cool, funny, and, uh, that's, I mean, that's really all the new stuff for this game. There was the, uh, uh, everything else is kind of reused, except for the, uh, arm, the wristband crossbow, but that's like, it wasn't that great. I, I don't, <laughs> it wasn't anything to gloat about. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. And, uh, Assassin's Creed Rogue... Um, not much new in the way of weapons. His weapons were different. He had a short sword and a long sword, which was cool. He had a great new fighting style. But really, where this game really, really got huge was the fact that he had all new guns. He had a he had this blunderbuss that would shoot out sleeping pellets or berserker pellets. He could wear a gas mask. You could put on the gas mask when gas comes around so you wouldn't be blinded. Um, the ship had all new weaponry, except for, of course, there's cannons, but everything else was completely new. There was, o there was oil slicks, there were fire shots, there was the double cannons in the front. I mean, the ship was awesome. It was freaking sweet. Um, and the reverse boarding was just so phenomenal. I, because that's the one thing I, I didn't get that they didn't put in Black Flag was the reverse boarding. Because when you get damage and health enough and you just start to die, it's like, I feel like they should, you know, get onto the boat and attack you like you would do to them. And it wasn't happening. I was like, well, you know, I don't... Then the next game came out and they're like, reverse boarding. I was like, yes. <laughs> um, <sighs> so, uh, other than that, not much else new with it. Uh, there were a few different crafting items, but nothing really to point a finger at. And all in all, I, I would really... I, I liked Rogue's new improvements to gameplay. It affected the gameplay a lot more than just uh, weapons or uh, new Rift missions. They didn't have Rift missions in Rogue, which is great. <laughs> so that's why Rogue gets the point. So as we stand, Assassin's Creed Rogue has six points, and Assassin's Creed Unity has zero, the way it should be. And I think the last category here, category number seven, overall satisfaction. I just want to stress that... Both games came out the same day. Both games shouldn't have been made. Rogue should have been the only one that was made, and they should have waited on Unity or not, or just scrapped it. Because Rogue was such a great game, it was a good follow-up to Black Flag, because you had all the mechanics you wanted, and then more. And also, you know, for whatever reason, in Assassin's Creed Unity, they were like, oh, we're taking out the, the wanted system. It's like when you have a condensed map like this, 
and I think I said this with Assassin's Creed Syndicate as well, when you have a small condensed map and the wanted system has been a big thing since the beginning of the game. Sure, it kind of started to fade out in, in 3 and 4, but in a game like this, where you're going back to like Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood type things, wanted system should be very, very strong and prominent, but instead they threw it away. And now you have Templar agents and the police. But killing police doesn't hurt your chances of finishing a mission, doesn't it doesn't give you any less score, it doesn't do anything. It just it's just a right and wrong thing that a lot of people don't really care about. And when you don't do that, when you take out the wanted system and you do all that stuff, it just it doesn't make the game seem complete. It doesn't make the game seem fun. Because it was because I mean the wanted system in the first three four games was great. It felt good. It was like, yes, I don't want to kill people. I don't want to do this stuff. I want to be more like in the shadows so I don't get this wanted. So I have to pay it off or bribe people or rip down posters. It's annoying. In Assassin's Creed um, 3 and 4, it was a hassle. Because it, the, the land was too big. And it really just didn't fit in either of the games. But in this game, Unity. Yeah, it should have been in here. <laughs> Like, you take it out on one of the smallest maps in Assassin's Creed history. <laughs> like, I don't get it. What do you want me to say? At least Rogue was smart and, did, and, and didn't put it in there. And Rogue has three factions in that game. It has Templars, Pirates, and uh, Police slash Assassins. And yes, there's no difference between killing them. But, I mean, at least if you go up to um, a, a Pirate... They won't attack you right away. Or if you go up to a uh, Templar, of course, they're not going to attack you. Um, and in Unity, you go up to a police officer, they'll just start brutally murdering you because that's how they're programmed. But I rest my case. Overall satisfaction, of course, Rogue gets it. And if you really need any more explanation, uh, you can go, uh... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just, it's such a low point, and Assassin's Creed has not come back from it. Everyone was like, oh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate's so f good, and I was like, uh, no, it's not. It has all the same bullshit. Yeah, it's a little bit fixed, but no, it's not, it's not that great. It's not, it's not bravo, clap, clap, 8 out of 10. No, it's more like a 4. And the, the people who go out of their way to type me messages saying, you're so wrong, this is why you're wrong. I can disprove every point they're making. I'm not going to knock you for liking Assassin's Creed Unity, or liking Assassin's Creed Syndicate, or liking any game that, that I think is bad, because everyone has their own opinions. But when you go out there saying, oh, this game is so great, why are you, why are you disrespecting it? Have the same common courtesy here. Let's be on equal footing. I respect your opinion, you respect my opinion, we kind of clash in the middle, but at least we have good points, and we can understand why the person doesn't like it. So instead of typing out, you know, fuck you, Assassin's Creed Unity is the best Assassin's Creed ever, listen to what I'm saying, react, and just say, you know, I, I liked Unity, and this is why I liked it. But you gotta remember, I'm judging it on before the past. Pa patches. Pre-patch. <laughs> because, like I said in the beginning of the video, if your game sucks when it first comes out, and you have to patch it to make it better, that doesn't make it a good game. It just makes it a patched game. So let that rest. <laughs> um, if you want to, and you like hearing my voice, you can visit my channel, which is Josh's Opinion. I have reviews on there for video games. I have um, gameplay videos. I have YouTube haikus. And I have my own podcast called Josh'cast, which is entering its second season next week. Um, so if you want to... You can head over there, you can subscribe, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, if you really, really want to, you can... Uh, I mean, it, don't if you don't want to, you just check out this channel, The Rant. You're on it right now. Just click the Rant button. We have tons of things on here. Well, not tons. We have a few things on here. We have our main podcast, which is called The Rant, where we just rant about comic books, video games, stuff like that. We have this series that I do, Versus, where I pit two games against each other. We're on a... I think I'm on my 15th now. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I lost count. And we also have Robert, who I do the gen the, this channel with. Um, he does five-minute reviews. He gives a lot of information in a short amount of time. Very concise, very consistent, with a lot of with good gameplay. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of information. It's good. It's good and quick. You know, if you like a quickie, there you go. 
<laughs> so anyways, if uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe if you like the channel. And if you don't like it, give it a dislike. And I will compare you to Emo Kylo Ren.